Today we have with us Mr. V. Sai Baba. He is the Chief Executive Officer of Lanco Solar. Sir, thank you very much for uh, taking our time, sir. Uh, sir, I'll start off with a general question regarding the solar power bits. Sir, the solar PV bits have gone uh, as low as 7 rupees per kilowatt hour. Sir, do you believe they have bottomed out or do you see them going to uh, levels of 5 or 6 rupees uh, in the phase 2 of National Solar Mission? Yeah, I think uh, you we cannot take uh, the lower bids. Uh, no, actually, if you see the range, yeah, they were anywhere between nine rupees thirty paisa to seven rupees. Uh, yeah, it's a big range, and seven rupees bids are very few, very few in the seven to eight rupees range. I think the reason uh, you know why people have bid uh, so low is uh, probably with the assumption that they will get uh, some international financing at lower uh, rate of interest. And also they have taken uh, some assumptions uh, as far as, uh, you know, the dollar-rupee relation, how it is going to be. And they have also not considered, some of them probably might not have considered even uh, hedging cost. You know, the risks are quite large. Second thing also, the, the falling prices of modules, uh, you know, globally, supply is exceeding the demand. So there is a, a huge glut of uh, solar modules in the market. So that's one of the reasons why the price have uh, fallen, apart from uh, the interest rate assumptions, whatever they have taken. I think these are all absolutely uh, high risk uh, thing. If you take the average tariff, you know, of all the solar bits last time, it was coming close to about 8 rupees 30 paisa or 8 rupees uh, 20 paisa in that range. So I think that is a that is a kind of a more realistic number, I would say, I would put it, you know, than uh, 7 rupees and all that. Because uh, the, the current interest rate at 13% interest rate what we have in India or uh, you know the dollar rupee the hedging cost whatever is involved. I don't think it is possible to uh, go below that. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, next question is regarding the CDM uh, market. Sir, so far only 10 projects have been registered under the CDM and uh, none of them have got buyers as yet. And about 125 projects are currently under the pipeline. Uh, sir, they need to uh, register under the CDM by December 2012, uh, otherwise the European Union won't accept their CERs uh, from 2013. Sir, after that, uh, a solar project developer, what options will he have to ensure financial viability of its project? Actually, the CDM contribution in the overall uh, solar uh, revenue stream, if you take, is very small. I think, of course, uh, it'll, it'll may, it'll, it does make a small difference in the overall uh, the economics. Uh, but I think that is, that is the most important factor we have to, you know, all that it may increase by is by a few paisa as far as the tariff is concerned. So, uh, the falling bid prices of solar PV, uh, so have they made uh, the renewable energy certificate scheme more attractive to the solar power developers? Yeah, yes, uh, the, the REC certificates uh, are uh, priced at about 9 rupees today, 9 rupees to, you know, the bottom uh, level. Uh, so, you know, they are definitely attractive at this point in time, you know, compared to 8 rupees 40 paisa or 8 rupees 50 paisa, average tariff, what we are talking about. Yeah, the, 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 on top of that, uh, the, the REC plus, uh, you also get uh, some uh, uh, revenue from the generation, power, power uh, sales. Yeah, it is uh, attractive, but the only concern which uh, the entire uh, investor community or developer community have is basically to, you know, the, the existing policy framework, you know, uh, does not really, uh, you know, um, enforce uh, the, the, the objectives of RPO. You know, if the utility is not meeting with their RPO obligation, what happens? Are there any cases where the penalties are levied? Yeah, those examples are yet to emerge in the country. That is uh, first and foremost fundamental thing. Second thing is, uh, as far as uh, the, the utilities' health is concerned, they are actually struggling to pass on their cost to the consumer. In such a scenario, uh, you know, will they go out of the way and buy REC certificates because there is an RPO obligation. The much larger obligation like power purchase agreement uh, obligations where uh, the power cost uh, is as low as 3 rupees 50 paisa, itself they are unable to honor. Uh, you know, will they honor a RPO obligation unless or otherwise you have a very, very strong uh, framework is the, uh, you know, question which is in the, uh, you know, which is there with the financial institutions as well as uh, the developers uh, while investing. 
the third thing is the financing is also not available because of these concerns the banks are hesitating basically to finance uh, projects based on rec and uh, you know the the sale of power at market prices are concerned so i for for uh, in my opinion for rec framework to really make effective in the country you know i think it it is it is going to take definitely some time and uh, it is extremely important that you know in the meantime we continue to have the market uh, you know visibility is there basically you should be able to see the what is the market size going to be in next 2 to 3 years unless and otherwise you have that kind of uh, uh, predictability of the market investments into manufacturing or investments into development or research and development uh, uh, in my opinion may not be you know uh, coming forward so you know maybe things like uh, you know probably uh you know the the, the lower interest rates uh, subsidized inter interest rates with a feed in tariff you know where where you make the market absolutely open for uh, you know you can uh, keep increasing the interest rates as the grid parity reaches so that you know it's more controllable mechanism and uh, also the make the entire thing uh, roll much faster Uh, sir your company also has some manufacturing uh, plans sir we have seen that the current manufacturers in india are facing financial troubles yes. they are in losses so what kind of strategy uh, is your company taking to ensure financial uh, profit yeah as a company what we are doing is slightly with a different strategy what we are doing is we are going with an integrated strategy of the whole business of solar we are building we are doing actually engineering procurement and construction we are also doing project development and developing bidding for the projects and winning the projects we are also doing installations on the rooftops and uh, rural uh, off grid applications yeah that that market is much larger for us i mean actually we are doing we are our target is to do about 500 megawatt per annum in about 3 uh, years down the line and uh, whereas our manufacturing plant what we are building you know is about uh, 250 megawatt per annum manufacturing uh, plant yeah the, the, the so and also the entire activities are uh, being uh, uh, you know the entire product is mean being manufactured at one single lo location that means right from polysilicon ingots wafers solar cells and modules the whole thing will be manufactured in one single location so the logistic costs are lower the manufacturing costs are relatively lower uh, you know because of the integration we are able to adopt uh, the, the high efficiency solar cell technology and manufacture the required wafers to meet that uh, high efficiency solar cell uh, requirement and uh, you know it it will feed into our own uh, market demand and with an integrated strategy sometimes the demand supply could keep on changing in the industry sometimes supply can you know beat the demand sometimes demand could could beat the supply so we are going with an, with an integrated strategy we are pretty confident that you know we have also benchmarked ourselves with global uh, manufacturers we keep doing that from time to time and uh, the major cost that goes into a polysilicon plant is basically power which you understand the power, power costs uh, quite well being a parent being a large power producer in the country so lanco being a very very large power producer uh, 4000 with 4400 megawatt it knows what uh, how much it cost to produce a power, uh, unit of power so we after studying all the dynamics uh, we are we got into this manufacturing plant it is a special economic zone 250 acre uh, manufacturing plant we are developing uh, we are promoting ancillary industries in and around that uh, plant basically to ensure that entire supply chain is built here and we are pretty confident that will be able to compete in the global market great sir uh, sir uh, we have seen there there are increased investments in the solar uh, tracker systems as well for power plants sir do you think that the additional investment in the tracker systems is justified uh, according to the rate of return these uh, plants have yeah actually the uh, actually solar tracker uh, utilization or installation we cannot generalize actually it depends basically where you are installing your uh, solar power plant for example the the power plant is installed very close to the equator the, the, the probably the the, the solar tra tracker you know the, the requirement the, the, it, it, has, it has got a different kind of requirement if, if it is away from the equator it said it has got a different uh, kind of requirement so it makes more sense uh, depending on the location where the plant is coming up 
the longitude and latitude of the, the you know the earth where you are installing this uh, tracker yeah the, so it is it is project specific it is we cannot generalize in general in a good location if you take the output increases by about 18 percent whereas the cost is in the range, range of about 12 to 14 percent there is a differential of about four percent if you install this in a good location where you can take the maximum benefit of uh, the radiation and uh, the tracker and uh, location advantage sir just one final question sir uh, as a, as we mentioned that the solar pv prices uh, the bid prices have fallen very uh, to very low levels how are the banks especially indian banks are responding to this yeah the, the uh, indian banks uh, are uh, you know the, the basic fundamental thing which is happening is with the low bids whatever is uh, being uh, you know uh, the people have uh, won the bids the most of them are going with thin film yeah the, the thin film is basically the financing is available from uh, us exim and all that at a very low interest rate you know sometimes without uh, i understand with uh, partial hedging also they are extending the loans yeah that is making developers to you know the, their economics looks more attractive that's why they are going with thin film while the global installation of thin film is only 15% in the global market in india thin film is close to about 50% and in the in return what's happening is uh, unfortunately why well, you know thin film is a good technology it's a good uh, product definitely you know uh, there's nothing to the only thing is it requires more land you know uh, for installation and uh, um, you know and also the, the efficiency of the thin film thin film is uh, much lower compared to crystalline silicon of course it costs lower uh, because of these uh, factors and also the interest rate. Interest rate is a, rate is a major factor why the people are going for uh, thin film thing. For example, uh, in the last phase, while global average, global ratio is 15% thin film and 85% test line. In India, it is almost like 40 to 50% thin film and 50% uh, crest uh, line. Yeah, and um, yeah, the, 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 so the, uh, I think, have I answered or? Thank you, sir. Thank you, yeah. uh, thank you very much, sir, for your time. Thank you.